better than that. <laughs> what has been the difference? It's like guys are playing free, <clears throat> free and easy. I mean, we find different ways to win. I mean, uh, you know, when you when you get on a streak like this, I mean, you got to give most of the players credit to the players. I mean, they've you know the opportunities opened up for some of them. Uh, I think we all were fatigued by the, the mellow stuff, and you know, we kind of get a 30-game season or a 25-game season that kind of makes a noise. And, uh, you know, one thing I, I believe is I, I, the game of basketball isn't that complicated. It's actually played best when it's simple. So, you know, when this happens, you go back to simple. You know, you go back to, you know, three or four fundamental things you want offensively, and three or four fundamental things that you demand defensively, and you build from there. And to be honest with you, the thing that we do right now is we defend every possession. And we're getting pretty good at it. I think the defense has been a big, big asset uh, to what we do. And we don't have the mistakes in the, the shot selection and the, and the, and the mental errors. We're kind of solid, you know, are we spectacular? No, but we're, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't get ourselves on most nights. As a coach, you sometimes don't get what seems like almost two seasons at the end of you know, the run you hit before and with, with Melo and now. I mean, how do you look at that? It's not often that you make a major trade and things come together like that. I mean, this this season has a, has had a lot of different twists, uh, different scenarios, injuries. Beginning of the year, two year top big guys not playing, you know, mellow thing thrown out there. Uh, you know, given Ty and Aaron major responsibility, and, and they really responded. And now you're changing the face of the team from you know five players rosters. I mean, I mean, it doesn't happen. You change two or three. But, uh, and really, the injury to probably Gallo and Aaron has helped, has helped us probably. Because, well, you know, it didn't back anybody up, you know, for about five or six games. I think everybody got the minutes they kind of wanted and got them anxious and excited. But now, getting them back into the lineup, you know, I think uh, you know, there's some that minute backup that I'm, going to, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to play tonight. Playing the two little guards could be more difficult. Sometimes it's more difficult because of your matchup. Sometimes it's more difficult because you got too many players. And the two little guard playing the two little guards together has been a big asset of our team. We're on that theme of newness. Uh, the last 17 trips, they were like 16 and a half. It's a brand new building. So you're hoping to kind of like bring some freshness to this building and kind of start their streak? <laughs> I hope so. I mean, I, I know we were bad. We, we we broke that record in Phoenix. We were awful in Phoenix. We won there for the first time in like 20 years. And we just won Atlanta, I think, for the first time in like 10 years. So hopefully we can. Uh, but you know, I mean, it's a cliche, but it's so true with this team. You know, we just got to stay focused on the game we're playing. Uh, I and mean, we're learning. We, we, you know, we have a great road trip. Uh, the possibility of having a great road trip. We can get one of these games here in Florida. And hopefully tonight we may be getting all of them. And, uh, the energy is in a great place. And we have a great West Coast, Western Conference race. It's it's going to be tremendous in the first two weeks of April. The first two weeks of April, there's going to be a good game every night that's going to have a factor in the playoffs. And we're going to be a big part of it. Can you win with uh, this fall at Sports Illustrated? Are you can our debate on TV tonight. Can you win in this day and age? I think Detroit did. Ten solid players without like a future Hall of Famer on that team. Can you win the, win the title? Is that what we're about to Is that what the discussion you're taking? In this day and age, without megastar players or superstar scorers, can you have ten solid guys? Who has done it? No. Well, I, I think the formula for me is, is pretty simple. It's a little bit Detroit, but you know, I think San Antonio is more who I'm trying to groom the team after. Be defensive minded, don't beat yourselves, play as a team. And then you know, I'm part to be a Tar Heel and I'm you know, trying to, you know, what, what I think is no one's writing about. And I haven't really even had this say it. Every player that plays has a guy behind them. They can take his minutes if they don't play well. Every, every player that's on that court, Ty doesn't play good. Okay, bring him at your chance. Every position had the same thing. At the two position there, you don't play well. I have JR, I have Gallo. I mean, I mean, I can play, I can play the point guards together. 
three positions, same thing. Four position, four and five position, Bird is playing great now. And the two big kids who haven't gotten the game are NBA players. I promise you, they are NBA players. I just, how do you put 12 guys on a court in, in, in a playoff run? It's hard to do. I mean, one of them might get an opportunity to play against the big guy tonight. But, and it's just, you know, in practice it's the same thing. You know, those days in the middle of February, March, a lot of veteran guys don't want to practice hard. And, you know, as a coach, you don't have to. But the peer pressure is there. You don't practice hard. This other guy plays well. He gets a more confidence. He gets a rhythm in the game. Competition is now a part of what goes on every night, which I think is exciting. That's why, That's why we play the game. Too many times that there's an entitlement to minutes in the NBA that really, to be honest with you, is, uh, is not, not, not serving good service, does not serve the coach well. Usually, the competition serves the coach well. Sure, you could probably write a book what's happened to you off and on the court the last year. Can you get it? How much money can you give me? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I might need a job <laughs> next year. Might be a pretty good book. <laughs> but for us who have, don't see you all the time, how is your health and, and, and how has that affected you? My health is great. I mean, I'm as healthy as I've ever been in 10 years, other than, <coughs> other than I've had cancer. And cancer is not, a, you know, every, I would say every two months, maybe probably every three months. I have a pretty serious doctor's appointment, you know, that you go in and you sit down and you talk to a guy and he tells you your immune system's this or we got to take a PET scan next year and, you know, the odds are this. And, you know, I'm actually going to have minor surgery to take uh, my filter out of my, my, my body next week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, there's all types of things that I'm going through. But, I mean, to me, coaching is kind of my second family. It's the close people that, and then the excitement of as the way I've termed it in, in, in Denver is getting a second chapter with the team. It doesn't happen in the NBA very often. Coaches usually move on. When the chap they turn to pages, coaches are changed, and they start the second chapter with someone new. And I think in a lot of ways, I've had seven really good, six and a half good years in Denver. And, you know, I can't deny in the last couple of months I was thinking it's going to be over. And, you know, it's best to probably, you know, go someplace else. But, you know, what has happened in the last month has been incredible. It's actually excited me because I get a new chapter. And I also get to close probably the t one of the toughest years of my life. Our and closure on that is kind of important. It's, it's now important for me to move on and, 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 and get excited about my health, get excited about my team, get excited about my family, get excited about, you know, having the honor and opportunity to coach in the NBA. Are you surprised by the success? I mean, most of the teams have made major changes. There have been major hiccups along the way trying to adjust. I mean, you look at New York and Miami, and there have been some hard times, but you guys seem to hit the ground running right off the right off the bat. I've been surprised, only because I think people don't understand our schedule has not been easy. I mean, the games that we have been playing, we have some big wins. I mean, we have some awful good wins in those stretches, and then also on the road where we haven't been successful. We've now kind of, I'm not saying we're going to be successful, but it looks like we're, we've gotten better in closing our games. George, uh, Gallinari, is, is he ready for a full four minutes? Or you gonna I think so. I'm, telling, I'm thinking 20. Around 20 is kind of what I'm looking at. Surgery next week. What, what exactly is the surgery? When you have blood clots, they put a filter. I think it's in your aorta. I'm not sure. Your aorta divides twice. It goes one that goes down each leg. I'm glad I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a filter in my. It stops blood clots. If I would have blood clots, it stops blood clots from going to your heart and your lungs. And uh, they feel I'm healthy enough. It's a, it's a positive thing because they feel I'm healthy enough to take it out. So that's what we're going to do next week. It's a 30 minute procedure, no problem. How refreshing, how fun is it for you to have this team playing like this where they go out and just hit, leave everything on the floor every night? I mean, I, I, how much of a joy is this for you to, to have this unit? I hate to say it, but it reminds me a great deal of the CBA. I mean, it reminds me of moments in the middle of February. Two of your players go to Europe, one guy gets called up to the NBA, and you've been a, an executing team, and all of a sudden now you're an athletic team. You know, the personality of our team has changed. When you take Chauncey and Melo out of your offense, your offense drastically changes. But the positive is the Knicks do a lot of things like we like to do. Uh, and, you know, I think in the game of basketball, if you play hard and you play as a team, I think good things happen. And 
excitement and enthusiasm that kind of has been regenerated is unusual at this time of year. This is the time of year where it's the February blues. This is where the 60th game, this is, man, I'm tired of this. We don't have that feeling. Our practices have an energy to them. We have a, we have a zip to our shooting rounds, you know, instead of moaning and groaning about coming here, we're kind of like joking around and laughing like we're in the first week of the season. Was there, any, was there any time, George, between your college good. and this crazy you. trade thing that you thought, you know, Thank you. That, well, I want to keep doing this, I want to, you know, keep coaching, keep beating my head against the wall, or just maybe just retire and take care of myself? Did that ever? Well, I mean, that, that's always been, the process of coming back was, let's do this year and see what happens. It's never been that I'm going to be coaching another 10 years. And, do I want to coach? No, I mean, I'm going to probably coach. I am coaching the NBA. I'm going to coach somewhere else. So. But, and I like the, the situation that's healthy, both physically and mentally for me. And I think Messiah and Josh have done that. I mean, Messiah and Josh, you know, I don't know what you know, they, they've looked at me in the eye and they said, this is what we want to do. And, and they've gotten almost everything. They've, they've looked at me in the eye and said they're going to do that.